August of 1965, Pakistan's incursions into Kashmir were foiled by the Indian Armed Forces with the capture of the vital Hajipir Pass. With the failure of this plan, Pakistan military launched an attack towards Akhnur from the direction of Chum and Joria. This was a full-fledged attack towards the town with elements of artillery, armor, infantry and close air support. The attack went in the early morning hours of September 1st, 1965, with the plan of capturing Akhnur by September 2nd. The Indian side swung into action to build the defenses of Akhnur, but they needed more time to reinforce it. The only real option to slow down the enemy's momentum was to involve the Indian Air Force into the battlefield. Army Chief General Chaudhary had a quick conversation with Air Force Chief Air Marshal Arjun Singh and made him aware of the situation unfolding. Both chiefs agreed on the need for close air support in Chamben Jauria and requested formal approval from the Indian Defence Minister YB Chavan. The approval was granted at 4.50 pm and the air base at Pathan Court was intimated of the upcoming mission in the region. Indian Air Force planned out three waves of attacks from Pathan Court into Chum using their vampire jets. The waves were to be 10 minutes apart so that when the first wave completes its attack on the enemy positions, the second wave is in position to commence their attack. This was so that they could build momentum into the battle and keep the pressure up on the enemy. The close air support that Pakistan was providing their positions was one of the most advanced fighter jets of the time, the F-86 Sabres and F-104 Starfighters. The Pakistan Air Force had superior equipment owing to their defense cooperation treaties with the US at the time. India, on the other hand, lacked these advantages and hence possessed the much less capable vampires, gnats and mysteries, which were at least a generation older than the ones with Pakistan. Losses were to be expected in the battlefield in case the enemy moved their air force at the right time. First wave, Squadron Leader S.K. Dahar, Flight Lieutenant S. Sahai, Flight Lieutenant I.P. Ahuja, Flight Lieutenant S. Bhardwaj. The first wave of four vampires took off from Pathan Court for Chum Battlefield at 5.19 pm of September 1st, with the objective of engaging enemy positions around the Chum Battlefield. They flew at 300 knots and only 500 feet above the ground to avoid detection from enemy radar. The plan was to go under the radar, complete their missions and get back to base. The first wave started targeting Pakistan positions, destroying multiple tanks and infantry vehicles. They did three passes over the battlefield, did some real damage to enemy, but as soon as they were getting out, one vampire jet was shot down by the enemy ground fire. The other vampires completed their attacks and got back safely. Meanwhile, the Pakistan Air Force was anticipating an action from the Indian Air Force and was keeping a close watch on any movements in and around the area. Pakistan Air Force's squadron leader Sarfaraz Rafiki and Flight Lieutenant Imtiaz Bhatti engaged their sabres against the Indian vampires. The second wave of Indian vampires were closing in on the battle area. Flight Lieutenant A.K. Bhagwagar, V.M. Joshi, W.M. Sondi and S.V. Fatak. India's 230 signal unit identified the presence of enemy aircrafts in the region, but they had no idea that the Indian Air Force was operating in the Chum region and may need this information. Their SOPs only included providing information to the sector army formations, which they instantly did. There was clearly a lack of communication here on the Indian side, due to which the Indian Vampire second wave did not receive any warning of enemy presence in the region. The second wave of Indian Vampires reached the battlefield and were orbiting the general area when Rafiki spotted two vampires out of the four and dived onto them from 20,000 feet. Bhatti provided tail cover to Rafiki. Rafiki got behind Bhagwagar and Joshi. Sondi and Fatak saw this happening and maneuvered their jets quickly to get behind Rafiki. Bhatti, who was present on Rafiki's tail, saw this happening and got behind Sondi and Fatak. Rafiki saw an opportunity and shot down Joshi and immediately started chasing Bhagwagar. Sony got close to Rafiki and was about to shoot him down. That is when Bhatti warned Rafiki about a jet getting close to him and advised him to break. Rafiki quickly fired at Bhagwagar and broke hard. 
the last fire hit its target and shot down Bhagwagar as well. Sonde fired at Rafiki but missed. Bhatti was behind Fatak and fired at him and missed. He then spotted Sonde and fired at him as well. Bhatti missed Sonde and Sodi was able to get back to base. Fatak on the other hand faced some technical glitch and had to eject from his aircraft. By this time, the third vampire wave had been engaged. Since this was all done in a haste, they were not properly briefed on the locations of enemy targets. They went up till Aknur, did not find any enemy targets, so they came back to base. The Indian side now was aware of the losses suffered by them. This was a major setback, but the job was still not finished. The Pakistan ingress had to be halted one way or the other. So they dispatched multiple sorties of Indian Air Forces, Mysteers, to support the Indian side in the battlefield. The first sortie got airborne at 7.05 pm. It was already dark. They reached the general battle area based on the briefing and then saw enemy tanks burning and vehicles in the vicinity. They used these as guides to attack the enemy formations around them. Multiple sorties of 14 Mysteers did some major damage to the enemy in the Chumjoria area. By the end of the day, the Indian force had suffered major losses in the battlefield, but the Pakistan ingress had halted in the Joria region. The Indian side lost four vampire jets on day one. Much of it was due to vampires being an obsolete jet against the sabers. Add to that, not having intel on sabers being in the vicinity put the Indian Air Force at a significant disadvantage compared to the Pakistan Air Force. But engaging the Air Force with the objective of slowing down the enemy ingress towards Aknur was the right decision. The Indian Air Force went in on short notice and was able to break enemy's momentum in the region. The enemy was on course to reach Aknur by September 2nd but was forced to halt their progress by the evening of September 1st itself. This brought the army some time to set up defences in and around Aknur. The Indian side, meanwhile, learned from its mistakes of utilising the outdated vampires against sabres, introduced gnats in subsequent operations.